Morning people. So today's mission is the bike. I'm having a bit of issue with it running smooth the way I like it to do. So what I found out is the one cylinder seems to be over fueling and I'm guessing it's because the way the the main jet comes out the bottom of the carb when the needle rises all the fuel is going up to the one cylinder. So I've decided I'm going to chop up the inlet manifold and I'm going to make a new one. So I'll quickly show you the issue I'm having with the plugs and uh, we'll go from there. Right, let's flip you over and go and show you. We've been playing with the tuning on this for a few days now and normal cruising, it's not pulling away, it's all right. Normal cruising. If you're sort of maintaining a throttle, she starts to cough. And if you just put the smallest amount of throttle on it to put the engine under load, it clears up. It's fine. Full throttle, not too bad. So I'll give up and took the plugs out. I've got one plug, which looks not too bad, but it's a bit nice chocolatey brown there, maybe. Touch lean. But then we've got a signs of overfueling around the top of the plug. And then the right cylinder, black as fuck. Well overfueling on the right cylinder. This oil's coming from the cam case on the end. So I'm thinking, this inlet manifold is a sack of shit. So what I'm going to do is quit it off and make a new one. Because so I'm guessing we're getting a dis discrepancy going through the two tubes. And so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to get it rolling loaded because I've given up playing with this thing. I've, I can't fucking figure it out. Right. That's your updates anyway. Don't get choppy. Right. So what we've got here is this is my inlet. It's very, let's say, not the best. I mean, inside there, I don't think you're going to see. Grab this torch, maybe. It's a bit, mm, rubbish basically. So, I've got this, I've had this ages because my plan was originally was to loop it. Right, so, this is a slightly different radius, so it's gonna need a little bit added in the centre. It's just the RW standard mild steel tube so what we're going to do we're going to have to cut this off yeah chop chop and then uh get all this paint off get the weld off get the tubes out and then we'll start working on this one so probably what i'll do is put this over on the bandsaw just push it through Probably going to be the easiest way to cut it off, I think. All right, let's have a look, shall we?
rum. Right, as you've just seen, we've uh, ground it back, took the old bit of tube out, it's ready to go, it's quite a nice fit, yeah, yeah, so I've got some heat in it and I've been hitting it, but what we're going to do once it's all welded, it's going to go in the mill and I'm going to face it, so it'll be nice and square. So now, as we can see, we don't fit, so I need to chop it there because I need to add a small section, because I couldn't get the right tube, or I could slice it and just open it up a touch. Hmm. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to add a section. Right, so we need to find the centre of this tube. The way I know how to do it is we take the, the overall outside diameter, which is a 142 mil. Yeah, 142 which is 71 millimeters. So what I do, that's how I do my, drop this on there to the edge. Yeah. And then bring in your square, set that on 71 millimeters. Yeah. And we have a center. So we should get a pen, not that pen, we'll use this one, yeah, so 71, on the edge, 71, tip it in, yeah, where's me a uh, Scribe diver gone. Where is it gone? So we've marked on the tube now. So we're at 71, 71, scribe, tilting, and a mark. So there you have the center line of your radius. That is the easiest way I know of finding it. So now we're going to set this up in the saw, chop it that way, and then we can work out the design, desired length and we can chop that off as well. We should just be clamping it in the saw that way, cutting it off. Either way, really. Right, let's go over to the saw, right, shall we? So, this is how I set my saw square. Basically, I drop that in against the back, lay it down. And you just want to kiss your blade. So you know you're running square with the back plate. So now what we're going to do, drop our tube in. A little square on the back. Bring the tube up square. Yeah. Bring it into our line, our centre line. Bring this in a touch, just to hold it. Square. Square on the line. It's not moving. Let me Tip 
checks have been a missing, but thought we square at the back. We're on our line. So vertical, parallel. And I get these. These are off my what I use for clamps on the milling machines. And you just want to stack in the back of there. So then you can get some bit of tension on it. Yeah. So we square that way. We square that way. Ta da! Two tubes. Cut nice. Right, next job. Bird base in, in, All right? Let me know my gap. All right? And what I'm going to do is once I've got my height, this part of the tube is going to get reused for in the gap. You see, clean the tubes up. Got my one, two, three blocks. And this is my one, two, three. Big block. What I'm going to do is put that up on there. Put that on there. Right. We know we level. Okay. So this is how I'm going to sort one of the length out that I want. Right. Monkey. Right. Thinking about there, to move it around. Right? I don't want it too short. I don't want it too long. Yeah. Think about there. Good enough to get a weld around. Now what we'll do is to make sure we get it square up. We'll make it even. 100 millimetres. 100 millimetres. Yeah? 100. 100. So that is going to be my inlet. It doesn't look very square on the picture, but it is. Yeah, if you look at that, like it's just the way it is set up. Yeah. Measure, measure. So, yeah, I'm going to do that then. So I've chopped them. So now what we're going to do? Make sure the square, are flat down. The height's right, which it is. More. We'll need to square them up and just drop a couple of tacks. Right, and then we can measure up the centre section. And make the centre section. Right, let's get right, This is my setup to get it square. So it's bolted to the table because there is a gap under there. This flange isn't square to start, start with. A couple of one, two, three, he's got this holding them square that way. Gonna drop some tag, some tig tacks on there. Get it square. Let's rock and roll.
double boot. Put that in place. Right. Well, then I take some measurements because these holes are slightly oversized. So I'm going to take some measurements, make sure they're in the right place first. And we'll fill the gap. Right, so the ports on the head are 153 outers and 86 inners. And we are inner. One five two and a half, and this one is eighty nine. But I have got a bit of space there, so I can open these up to suit the hole. But the outside's right; the inside just needs that little bit of a gap tapping over, which I'll do once it's fully welded. So right, we need to fill this gap. And my gap is 19 millimetres. So I need 19 millimetres of material. Just so happens, we have plenty. Back over. Right. So what I've done there, fill the gap. I'm still smoking. Give another quick tea ground here. Yeah, I may have found a thin spot. And uh, that was uh, 75 amps. And this is... one5 wall. So it's pretty bad, right? Right, so that's that bit done. Now we need to make the tube that comes off for the carb. But I might finish this up first. So what I'm gonna do before I weld anything is I'm gonna knock these round just to get them fitting snug. But this is still freaking hot. So time, 12 o'clock. I've got to go to work soon, so I might have to finish off this tomorrow once this is cooled down. I'll go back on the camera and we'll knock these round. Knock these round, get some welds around there. Face it, because it'd be easier to put in the in the vice on the mill without a bit of pipe sticking out of it. Right, rock and roll tomorrow, see ya.